A very good afternoon, everyone, all the viewers across the globe of the Vertible Views from Ortho TV. We welcome you for our next episode of the Vertible Views, the Spine live stream. Today, we have a very special guest, Professor Ji Suha. Dr. Ji Suha will be talking today about the past, present, and future of UV technique as well as demonstrating the surgical videos of the UV fusion. Dr. Ji Suha is the chief of the Division of Spine Surgery at the Yonsei Oke Hospital. He is a celebrated neurosurgeon and one of the pioneers in the UV technique. Dr. Ji Suha has been instrumental in the foundation of the UV Society and serves as a general director on the same. He has authored numerous articles, book chapters and various publications and presentations at the various national and international levels. His interest lies in the minimally invasive spine surgeries, UBE, SELD and plasma ablation surgeries. His professional affiliations include various roles and memberships at the numerous organizations including the prestigious Korean Neurosurgical Society, the Korean Spinal Neurosurgery Society, the Korean Society of Minimal Invasive Spine Surgery, and the Korean Society of Endoscopic Spine Surgery. In addition to the clinical practice, Dr. Ha enjoys playing golf, working in, out in the gym, and chilling at the beach. We welcome Dr. Ha, who's we feel very much obliged and happy that he accepted our invite and sharing his knowledge with us today. Going to in the past of the UBE, the start of the UBE or endoscopic or minimally invasive surgery starts with the landmark research by Cambian et al. in 1983. Professor Cambian, Pervez Cambian, uh, American surgeon born in Tehran, Iran, in 1983, he first published the percutaneous lateral discectomy of lumbar spine and introduced the Cambian triangle and discectomy with the endoscopic approach. Followed by a series of different researchers, the foundation of UBE has been led by Professor Anthony and Professor Abdul Ghaffar. Professor Anthony, 1996, from Argentina, he published the Translaminar Lumbar Epidural Endoscopy, Anatomy, Technique and Indication article in arthroscopy in 1996. In 2001, Dr. Abdul Ghaffar from Bernardin, he presented his work in the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons in 2001. Getting inspired from the work, the Korean surgeons, Yang Choi, went to Bahrain and learned the UB technique and he got it in South Korea. He, he got trained himself, he trained all the surgeons, most of the surgeons who were interested in UBE. Following his work by Dr. Choi, Dr. M, who trained and published their research at various conferences in, across the globe including South Korea, Japan and US. Followed in 2013 and 15, Soleiman et al. published their research about ir irrigation endoscopic discectomy, a novel percutaneous approach for lumbar disc prolapse and for spinal stenosis. Whatever the foundation of UBE is now is based on the work published by Soleiman in 2013 and 2015 et al. Talking about the current trends of the UBE, currently the most wide research is done more than 80% in South Korea with the leading surgeons like Cho et al, Kim et al, Hyo et al, Park et al and Jisoo ha et al. Now <clears throat> talking about various techniques for the new surgeons, there are various minimally invasive techniques like tubular, uniportal and UBE. We strongly believe that any surgery which is done with the best technique and giving pet better patient outcomes and works for the surgeon is best overall for the surgeon as well as the patient. A badly done uniportal or a tubular or UBE is never better than a well done open surgery. 
the tubular and the unipertal have restrictions in the ability use of the hand instruments and the visualization uniportal has same working portal as well as the viewing endoscopic portal adding limitations to it but with ube there is no limitations in the vision as well as the working channel it's an amazing and innovative technique and shifted the new paradigm to the in the history of spine surgery it has advantages of minimally invasive spine surgery like less muscle ligament or bony damage as well as less blood loss and earlier recovery with the help of continuous irrigation hemostasis flushing of small blood vessels and identification of blood vessels identification of all the structures nerves phlegm it helps in getting the technique and the outcomes better and with the instruments as same as used in the knee or the shoulders arthroscopy and spine instruments which are used for the open conventional techniques there is no need of increasing the cost of the instrumentation too with this benefits uva adds a lot of advantages to talk more about the technique the current trades and how he does it we welcome professor g suha for the further proceedings thank you um Thank you for introducing Dr. Raj. And uh, this is my great honor to be here to present this presentation. Uh, I'm going to talk about the UB fusion surgery. And I really hope it will be um, helpful for upgrading your endoscopic skills. So, uh, compared to a long history of full endoscopic surgery, the UBE is quite brand new technique, as, uh, which has 10 to 15 years uh, history, very short. But primary concept of bipolar endoscopic surgery is, was came from the Destando system from India. But uh, that was an air-based surgery, like a microscopic surgery. But water-based modern concept of UBE was born in Korea 2001. After then, it is explosively developed and uh, become popular worldwide. Uh, this picture, uh, this is uh, our first World Congress of UB. It just uh, is a first international conferences uh, by the UB and only for the UB. And more than 250 uh, surgeons are coming from all over the world. And it was very uh, great, great uh, conference was. And uh, uh, from Asia to Europe, and uh, also finally to the America, began to fall in love with UBE, I think. So last winter, the Korean UBE pioneers participated to the NAS and uh, showed them UBE fusion techniques with expandable cage, very successfully. So also, and uh, last summer, uh, in Korea, we first published the textbook of UBE. Basically, endoscopic surgery, uh, including UBE or unipolar, is water medium surgery. So continuous water in and out uh, makes a lot of advantages. Continuous water flow um, makes irrigational effect and provided us some clear view <coughs> for surgeons. However, we should always worry about the disadvantages. In and outflow water is not, uh, I mean, the, if outflow water is not continuously, the water can be uh, accumulated along the neural structures. Uh, and that, that may occur ICP elevation. So during the surgery, uh, we always have to think about that, about the uh, in and out flow water equally. But especially compared to the full endoscopic surgery, the UBE has uh, um, some, some more advantages. Uh, that is, uh, instruments are moving very independently, so it makes uh, less visual or emotional limitations. Uh, the, all the instrument of UV fusion is very same as fusion surgery, just conventional surgery. But of course, there are some special tools for UV fusion. Uh, it is called a cage glider. 
uh, if you can use this device you can insert cages more uh, easy and safely uh, I'll show you how to use it uh, at the video clip on the next page so this is a surgical stab of uh, UV fusion surgery is uh, looks same as a uh, conventional surgery so let's talk about the uh, entry point basically for simple decompression two skin incisions uh, two skin incisions are made near spinal lamina junction look at this blue uh, here the blue uh, here blue star marking that is a spinal lamina junction and the yellow incision mark is for simple decompression but for the fusion surgery the horse that the skin wound is not only used for the decompression it is also used for cage insertion or uh, percutaneous screw insertion so as for me I rather to make uh, two skin incisions more laterally so directly over the midline of the pedicle or lateral margin of the pedicle at uh, this picture the red circle is a pedicle so I made the skin incidence on the blue line technically the, for the simple decompression UV is more comfortable on the left side approach because the slope of lamina looks more gentle if we stand the left side uh, so the UV is based on because uh, the UV is based on undercutting technique but on the right side technique uh, on the right side approach lamina looks so deeply and steep uh, look at these actual images here the blue area is a dorsal surface of lamina and the red surface is a ventral surface so you can see the very steep lamina is so it's a little bit hard to do uh, when you decompression the right side is more harder than left side but the fusion is not uh, undercutting technique so it's a little bit different the fusion is quite different from the decompression surgery so for fusion surgery we need a total fastectomy and cage insertion so laminectomy should be more wider than the simple decompression so uh, we don't need to stand on the left side only so right side approach is fusion is not as hard as uh, uh, right side approach of simple decompression um, furthermore especially for the L5S1 uh, right side approach is more comfortable for the cage insertion because of the sacral angle uh, this color yellow is our right hand the instrument the blue arrow is uh, our uh, scope, the view angle, view, view, view portal. So, if we stand on the right side, look at the below image. The right side, the right hand, our instrument is more parallel to the sacral angle, so easy to cage insertion than left side. Uh, okay, the steps, the entire step of fusion is very same as conventional surgery. So do you think uh, how to do the fusion surgery by UBE is as uh, same as conventional surgery at all? No, I don't think so because uh, UBE is different surgery from the conventional surgery. I mean, uh, UBE fusion uh, has to be quite different from the conventional. So I'm going to talk about the uh, the that differences from three per, uh, three perspectives. The first one is fastectomy, and second is end prop, and third is cage insertion. First, let's think about the fastectomy. Uh, okay, before you do uh, UV fusion surgery, you need to think about endoscopic anatomies. The endoscopic fusion is not a miniature version of conventional surgery they are totally different look at this picture the blue circle the blue circle is the view range of conventional surgery when you do the fusion surgery at L45 but the endoscopic view range is limited in a green circle so conventional surgery can look entire spinal structures during surgery uh, but yeah it is great advantages for uh, bone work something but UV limited focus but magnified view uh, uh, 
10 to 20 times uh, magnification is allowed than microscope that it gives us a more powerful advantage for to uh, parent work so in, in conventional tulip we use to we usually do v shape uh, laminar total facetectomy at the blue 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 line like a blue line but for UB we don't need to full decompression of the IAP so I do I do only uh, effective facetectomy that uh, removes IAP horizontally from the spinal laminar junction uh, like a green line for the endoscopic surgery the camera enters into the lumbar spinal canal uh, that means you don't need to a lot of bone work than conventional surgery but think about the conventional surgery in case of a conventional surgery the eyes are out of the body located so why the laminectomy is needed than the endoscopic surgery the actual size of the cages we use the cage the same as open surgery so the actual size is 7 to 15 millimeters high so and the effective facetectomy pro, um, provide uh, the sufficient uh, space for cage insertions but the most important thing in the UB fusion surgery the endoscopy fusion surgery the inserting cage for inserting cage the more SAP resection is more needed than IAP resection because the cage is blocked by the SAP so I recommend uh, yeah IAP we don't need a total total removal but SAP we have to try the cut, cut it off uh, totally so I show you some Some videos of the facetectomy, laminar facetectomy here. So look at an image. There is a lamina, uh, laminar's uh, lower margin of the lamina, and you can see the 12 o'clock area. There is a spinal lamina junction, and now I'm doing the uh, soft tissue removal you know the periosteal dissection with a uh, coagulator so you can see that that is a IAP start point and um, before the IAP resection the bony work you have to remove all of the cover the soft tissues because the soft tissues power is very strong so after cut it, cut it off the bone air, bone 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 and then if you don't uh, remove all the soft tissues the bone fragment is not easy to get it out so before the IAP resection I do the 360 degree the soft tissue removal is very essential for removal of the IAP and after that you can see the whole exposure of IAP here like this red, uh, red line and then 12 o'clock you can see the there is a, a spinal laminar junction so I will start I will start the laminectomy I mean the IAPectomy from there look at the osteotum like this so start from the IAP uh, spinal laminar junction and to the horizontally just you need it to the, uh, the IAP resection the above I mentioned the UB surgery is very powerful and very advantageous of the point is we can use all the kind of the conventional surgical tools this osteotomy is not a commented for the only UB it's just an open surgical instrument so use this and cut the horizontally the IAP first and then you can feel the IAP is separated from the lamina so the, to the spinal lamina junction uh, from the spinal lamina junction to the foramina area and then you can pick it out 
the bone, ambula or partial removal or just the drill. You can also use a drill. But I need some free bone, so I always do try to the pick it out the end block. So use a pituitary or something and then pick it out. Right this. Yeah. Total IAP resection is achieved. Then you can see the their base base area, there is a SAP. So uh, this patient especially need uh, some ULBD, the bilateral decompression. So I did a little bit more bone work to the more cranially for removal of total ligament ligament problem resection. So you, you can use uh, drills or punches or even osteotomes, whatever you want. It's very magnified, but you can see this whole the procedure is very same as conventional surgery. So it's very familiar to open surgery, open surgeons. So, so more laminectomy for more uh, ligament fibrectomy is achieved. And then I'll try to show you my uh, <coughs> trial of SAP resection. And then you can see the whole, whole morphology of the SAP here. So please do the soft tissue removal along the SAP. It's the same as IAP. And then you can see the recessed area. So it means uh, there, there will be a pedicle and uh, that is uh, the root of the SAP. So we have to cut, uh, cut from there for uh, total SAP resection. Right is use a stethoscope or chisel and Total resection of SAP is very easily achieved. So, what do you think of when you look at these videos? It's, it's amazing because there is no not much bleeding uh, like uh, open surgery. It's it's very uh, powerful advantage and it takes uh, it gives us more less wasting of time. So. Uh, when I do the fusion surgery, I only takes uh, less than two hours. Uh, one and a half hour is enough to f do the uh, fusion surgery because we don't have to. We don't need to waste our time to uh, coagulation or something. So after the resection of total SAP and and take it out, pick it out, and block is possible. With the pituitary, then you can you can see the SAP is uh, now picked out, and the total laminar facetomy for UV fusion is achieved. So let's just talk about the second issue: the endoplate prep. What is different from the conventional surgery? So as you know, uh, the biggest advantage of endoscope is that is can we can perform perfect endoscopic the end plate preparation because our scope is can go into the inter discal area so we can see who the uh, inter discal intervertebral space area that means uh, removing annulus and uh, uh, end plate removal is more easy under direct vision so and uh, there is a uh, one more point is that uh, removing annulus as much as possible to the medial side 
it provides us more wider view. Uh, if you do, if we do the uh, simple annulotomy and look at that blue squares, uh, we can we cannot sh see the contralateral side. It's uh, hard to look at it. But if we do more medial annulotomy, when we do the laminectomy, uh, when you do the disco, disco resection, and then look at that uh, yellow square, then we can see the contralateral very easily. So I always recommend when you do the annulotomy, more medial is more safe and more easy to the surgeon. And let's think about the cage selections. We can use all kinds of cages of the conventional surgery, the plate cage to the axillary cage, you know that this is a kind of little bit small type of the only or the lip cages. So in preoperative MRI or CT image is very essential. So I always measure the diagonal range length of the disc. Then I choose the preferred cages. So if the, this patient, the diagonal length is 39.6 millimeters. So I can also use a plate case and tilly cases, but the tilly cases, um, Minimal size is 40 millimeters, so it's not recommended to use it. And uh, accessible bone packing can be dangerous. I have something interesting case here. So this is my case. Uh, I inserted the axillary cages, but before the cage insertion, I used so many uh, bone chips to pack it in front of the cages. So the bone is um, break through the annulus and going to the anterior wall. So you can see the post of CTs, you can see the bone structures. But um, luckily, this patient has no any uh, symptoms, but we have to be very careful of these damages. So I recommend that you make your own cage selection criteria like this. This is my criteria, but um, I recommend it. make your own criteria will be more uh, easy to select the cages. So if you can do the put the cages transversely, uh, it's going to be very helpful to making good lodosis, lodotic curvature and reductions. So for make the cage transversely align, put the cages into the intervertebral space obliquely first like this picture and then team markers of the cages across the midline and then Push holder, push the holder downward, and finally you can rotate it, it transversal like this. So I show you some video clips for the end plate prep and cage insertion here. So you can see that the tra traversing route on the twelve o'clock area, and here is a. Uh, annulus on the center of this video. So here is the annular. So we are going to the annulotomy for cage insertion. This is a kind of a scope retractor, the root retractors. And look at that. The more medial annulotomy show, gives us more or wider the working space. And after annular to me, and you can do the disectomy like this. And you can also use uh, shavers. And so you can you can use all the instrument that you used to use at the conventional surgery. So after disectomy, look at that. Now I'm going to the more medially for the more wider view. And this is the end plate preparation.
and after end product preparation, you can see the a perfect a total end prep and the prep and and the plate preparations. You can see. Yeah, look at that. Uh, it's very beautiful and very perfect. You can only you can see is uh, just a bone surface. The end part and the plate is totally removed. So we can check under direct vision is a very advantage uh, aspect of the endoscopic surgery. Uh, after that, use uh, root retractors is a is a is the same same root retractors where, where when you do the conventional surgery and use a retractor just to protect the traversing root and this is a cage glider that I was said, that I said uh, above mentioned above and like, like that put the cages this is the only cage and put the cages obliquely first and the tip of the the lateral tip of the cage is across the midline and then we can put that uh, transverse rotation we can see that the perfect insertion of the of bigger cages so I show you some cases this is a simple case of the grade one recessive patient this all three patients are different patient and you can see the very good reduction and the, the transverse line cages, you can see that. And this is a grade two patient. Also, you can reduct very successfully with uh, uh, UV fusion surgery. And this is a long level fusion, more than two or three levels. You can see the more uh, ideal lodosis and uh, you can see the also uh, full decompression after fusion surgery. And uh, uh, we have to uh, focus on the, these actual MRI images. Look at the actual MRI images. You can see that the very minimal muscle damages are there. If we did uh, open surgery, the muscle will be more hurt. But in this post of MRI, the post of day one, uh, the muscle is very intact. Uh, so you can find the where is the uh, tract of the fusion surgery and this is uh, another long level surgery and you can see the complete decompression of the central area uh, another, another one and you can see the also the good rhodotic curvature restoration and uh, uh, s s decompression is very successfully achieved there, so the kinking root sign is disappeared. This is forever decompression, forever fusion is always possible. And then, as a segment of coronal instability with scoliosis patient, so and uh, this patient has also osteoporosis, so I used uh, bone cement uh, augmentation. And after this surgery, this patient, the uh, coronal balance and the surgical balance was very improved. And also we can do the fusion extension surgery for ASD patient. Um, um, just just uh, four, four years ago, we thought this, is, this technique is impossible, but uh, now we can do, we can do very uh, effectively. So this patient, uh, underwent L45 posterior screw fixations at another hospital, but this patient uh, come to my office with uh, aggravated low, low area back pain and brutal pain. So I checked x-rays that this patient has uh, instability on L5-S1 and uh, at the, on the MRI, the stenosis is aggravated. So I, 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 I explained the patient uh, this is uh, because of the ASD, so I, I I told him, let's do the fusion extension surgery by UBE. So actually this, this case is the, my first case of the extension surgery. So uh, luckily I, I succeeded very, 
uh, provenances. And you can see the indirect and direct decompression of the formula and central area. So this is a take-home message at the last slide. Uh, the surgical the destruction of muscle and ligament structure uh, is very reduced and very less. And the uh, surgical infection is very low because of we use a continuous irrigation system. So, um, and uh, one more point is end preparation is very beneficial than the conventional surgery. So uh, I think the basic principle is very same as the minimal invasive fusion techniques, but we use uh, endoscopy, so it's a little bit kind of different as uh, we can see the more detail and more closely. And it, it gives us a more safe and effective uh, way to the surgery. I, I can swell, yeah. If you are adapted to the UV, it's not requiring long, love, long learning curve for the fusion surgery. So let's try. Why don't you try the UV simple decompression first? So I, I strongly recommend the future surgery will be uh, very, uh, play, uh, the, U, the UV or the unipolar surgery will be the place, the old conventional surgeries, I think. Thank you for listening. Thank you. And, uh, uh, I, I will introduce uh, Raj again. Uh, I want to hear about the future detectives from the, uh, Dr. Raj, and we will discuss about the UB and UB fusion more. So please welcome to Dr. Raj. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. That was terrific technique and really amazing talk you discussed, a fabulous presentation. As we know, every technique has its own limitations. UB comes currently with its own limitations like uh, difficulty in doing the intradural work as well as if there is a big rent in the dura there will be technical difficulties in repairing the same so we come up with the called the hr arm the haraj arm and you are hearing it here first on the ortho tv evotable view show we are working very closely with the tech card company an endoscopic company which are developing the arm which will attach from the table to the endoscope keeping the endoscopic hand which is holding the endoscope for the viewing portal free for the surgeon so the surgeon can create a third portal for working on the on the intradural pathologies working on the intradural runs as well as as with the third portal and two working hands we can increase the speed of the surgery as we are using both hands to, for doing the work as the third portal endoscopic portal being held by the HRR we are looking forward for it and within six or 12 months we'll be having the HRM in action apart from that with the upcoming of the HRM the future of UBE looks promising we can do the adult as well as the pediatric deformity work in the future considering taking the just midline approach doing superficial skin and fascia exposure and not exposing the muscles just taking portals with the UB technique doing the facetectomy doing the intradiscal work releasing as much as you want getting correction as much as want passing the submuscular rods so this could be the future directives and game changer in the UB technique in the degenerative adult and pediatric deformity work also as already discussed it's commonly been used for the low grade listosis like grade 1 and grade 2 but in high grade listosis too with the over the top or under the laminar decompression of the IAP we can easily utilize this technique in the high grade listosis and get the correction and achieve good lordosis and good results as discussed it can be also used for the intradural benign tumors for the excision it's been used by various surgeons but with HRM we can use that more commonly it can be also used for the vertebral and pathological issues which having the benign tumor or infections 
So considering all these things, UBE looks promising. Apart from that, the limitations considering the long term and large cohort studies are yet to be published, which will come definitely in the future. The future of UBE looks promising. Thank you. And we'll take the question and answer. We have um, uh, audience here, Dr. Srinidhi Kulkarni. He will be asking and um, will questions uh, to the panel, and we'll be going forward. Uh, <clears throat> hello. Uh, it was an excellent talk, Dr. Raj and Dr. Ha. Yeah, uh, nice yeah. Uh, I have just one question. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your views about the learning curve of UBE for the mm. upcoming surgeons who are uh, just taking up UBE for training and who want to do UBE as their surgeries? Uh, you, you mean for the beginners? What? Yeah, for the beginners who have just started UBE. Yeah, that's a good, very good question. Uh, first of all, I always recommend and I encourage the young spine surgeons who want to do the UB like endoscopic surgery, uh, I always told them the uh, getting to more experience of a lot of open surgery. Yeah, and uh, study a lot about the overall spinal anatomy and biophysiology or the physiomechanics. Because uh, before becoming the endoscopic spine surgeon, and me, uh, I also studied uh, deformity, which was a uh, you know maximal surgery at the university hospital. That was very helpful to me. So, if you want to do the endoscopic surgery, I always recommend uh, you have to do more study and more, uh, more. I mean the experience. Uh, of the open surgery will be needed. Uh, second, uh, use uh, a lot of learning opportunities. Uh, nowadays, there is a, a lot of uh, so many good lectures and conferences about the UBE. So you can, o yeah, you can also visit uh, uh, and run from a doctor who has a very much uh, experience. So it will be helpful that because he has uh, detailed experiences that you cannot learn from the book. So, and uh, so I, I want to talk about you is uh, if you try to do it alone from the beginning, it's very hard to learn it. So I always recommend to the beginners, the first is uh, study about the open surgery. I mean the global spine mechanics. And second is use so, so many uh, 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 conferences or direct lecture for the learning the UBE. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much, um, Professor Abba, about, yeah. um, about your answer and first process. But, uh, currently, everywhere it's mm. been discussed that, and it's always been compared which technique is yeah. better over other open versus uh, tubular microsurgery versus uh, uniportal versus UB. UB has been called sometimes the endoscopic assisted surgery. Uh, the thought process overall in the world is, uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, badly done uniportal or tubular or UB is definitely worse than much, much betterly done and better done open surgery giving the good uh, clinical mm -hmm. and patient outcomes. So. What are your thought process about these discussions, which is better, which is uh, more helpful uh, between uh, mm. tubular versus uniportal versus UB technique? Oh uh, yeah, uh, right. uh, okay, uh, it's very difficult questions. Yeah, and, and it's a very uh, question I get the most. Yeah, and I want to say additionally, I, I want to say about that. Uh, I, I, I showed your OSPD, also, TV mm -hmm. shows that uh, Professor Chor Kim. Mm -hmm. I think I totally agree with him. Mm -hmm. He, I, I think, he said the correct answer. Mm -hmm. But uh, in my opinion, um, uh, yeah, uh, what I wanted to emphasize is that uh, there is no uh, completely superior surgical method than other, mm -hmm. other uh, compared to other procedures. So even when 
the microscopic surgery was uh, born and active, the open surgery continued to move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, that means uh, it's the same now. The full development of endoscopic surgery will not eliminate the microsurgery or, I mean, the, the, the development of the bipolar surgery is not eliminate the, the need of the monopolar, the mm -hmm. unipolar mm -hmm. surgery. So, for endoscopic surgery and UBE are the, the historically is a inseparable brothers. Mm -hmm. So it's very same, a very they are very similar systems use uh, water based. So uh, it's a question of choosing a surgical method uh, that works better for each individual surgeon. Mm -hmm. It's not a question that has right answer. Do this, do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not kind of that. So however, the however. The unipolar and bipolar have uh, each advantages and disadvantages. We have to uh, think about that. So typically, the unipolar has the advantage of being more or less muscle damages mm -hmm. because they use only one portal. Mm -hmm. So, but while the bipolar has the another advantages mm -hmm. of the. Uh, as you said, uh, no limitation of vision or the motiv motions. So, so also the choosing surgical tool is very. Uh, uh, we can choose the surgical tools like uh, open surgery. Mm -hmm. So I think that is uh, that point is more superior than the unipolar. Mm -hmm. And uh, rather, I want to talk about the advantages of UBE more. Mm -hmm. The UBE is uh, more familiar to beginners mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, as you you can see the videos, uh, the the. The sight seeing and uh, our motion is very similar to open surgery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the running curve is uh, more gentle than the unipolar surgery. Mm -hmm. So also, I think the, for the more complicated surgery mm -hmm. at the future, the bipolar surgery would be a uh, standard of the surgical method. Mm -hmm. Is my uh, personal opinion. But uh, okay, so because of the higher higher of the freedom. Mm -hmm of both hand, mm -hmm. so without any restrictions make it better uh, surgical techniques, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to talk about mm -hmm. to the Dr. Raj, mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, you've met uh, many finest yeah. surgeons all over the world. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you experienced all three mm -hmm. uh, fascinated mm -hmm. uh, surgical procedures. Yeah. Uh, I want to hear from you mm -hmm. yeah you're thinking so uh, yeah. definitely um, tubular uh, has its own advantages like uh, it's almost similar like open conventional with the minimal approach mm -hmm. of the tube uh, you can do uh, same uh, look at the same anatomy as like in uh, open like yeah. intramural approach but the restriction of the vision with the tube because you, all you see is through the tube and the instruments uh, they go at the trajectory mm -hmm. is very limited Mm -hmm. The movements are not free with the tube. That's one of the things. Again, with the uniportal technique, uh, you have just the one uh, portal. You you can you have to use as the working portal as the endoscopic portal. So the, again, the limitation of the vision as well as the range of motion is pretty much limited. Yeah. And also the working length from the patient to the instrument is longer. So. Mm -hmm. Instrumentation, handling instruments, is much little difficult in uniportal mm. for the new surgeons who are trying to adapt. Leaving, leaving kinds of kind of leading to the higher learning curve. Mm. But with the advancement of the UB technique, there is a total shift of um, paradigm leading to the advancements of uh, advantages of the open technique, where you can freely use the instrument. Mm. Uh, there is good visualization wherever you put the scope you can see everything uh, you can do all the pathologies which were been taken care of by uh, open technique uh, like discectomy decompression transfer mm -hmm. lateral recess all can be tackled by the ube technique mm -hmm. <clears throat> and with the development of development of the hrm which is coming in action yeah. soon we can definitely take care of uh, almost all the pathologies uh, of the spine so this is what I personally feel uh, 
that UV has all the advantages of minimally invasive surgery and it's more versatile and more giving freedom to the spine surgeons yeah. and hopefully in the future all the young surgeons will take it take it more and will yeah. have better large controlled data about it yeah uh, yeah I agree yeah thank it's you very good comment thank you thank you very much uh, professor about uh, thank you for your time and it's been amazing and wonderful lecture we thank you Srinidhi for being part of the lecture and thank you author TV thank you uh, our <coughs> of the TV team uh, and we thank Yonsei Okio Hospital for helping us in this uh, arranging the lecture. We also thank you Mr. Chang from the uh, audiovisual team for helping in recording and distributing the, relaying the lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you.